price action patterns. I'm going to give you five of them today. I'm champion trader Kevin Davey. Stick around. Number four is a great way to use candlesticks and number five is a great way to use outside bars and inside bars. So let's get started. I'm going to talk about five price patterns. I'm going to show you code that's in TradeStation and I'm going to kind of describe what I'm doing a little bit and then I'm going to show you some results and show you how I got there and, and some markets and I'm going to do that for each of the five so you're going to kind of see the same structure five times it's just going to be a different pattern so this first pattern what we're doing here is we're counting the number of up bars and compared to down bars okay so an up bar obviously if is if the close is greater than the open okay now that's easy well if you you if over recent history you have more of those up bars than down bars that's a bullish signal and in that case what you do there's one other part to this is you wait for a, a short pullback now there's a lot of different ways to describe pullbacks you could use pivot points, you could use uh, deviations from a, a moving average or something. What I'm using here is just a simple momentum. So I'm saying if the close is less than the close a certain number of bars ago, which I'm defining as the variable pullback here in this code, when you have this pullback, a momentum pullback, and you have more up bars and down bars over a given period, that's a good, that's a buy signal, okay? And I'll show you this in a second with some actual trades. And vice versa for short trades. I always like to, to have things symmetrical. So I tried to do the exact opposite going short because a lot of markets you can go long and short just as equally. Maybe not stock indices, that's the one where I wouldn't do some symmetry, but just about everywhere else I would. So this is pretty easy to understand, right? I mean, I can explain it. Hey, more up bars and down bars and look for a pullback, then you buy. Uh, I did this on daily bars with silver over a five year period. I just put a simple exit to it um, just to test the entry. So I'm either exiting after five, 10, 15 or 20 bars, really easy. And I do some iteration here. I try not to do a lot. In this case, I did 180 like different variations of look back periods and that kind of thing. And what I'm looking for there when I do some of this initial testing is to make sure that a lot of the iterations are profitable. You know, you don't want to find something that works with one specific look back period and one specific, uh, you know, exit. You want it to be robust and work over a wide variety. So in this case, 170 out of the 180 cases I ran showed profit after uh, trading costs, after slippage of commission. So that's, that's pretty good in my mind. Um, that kind of shows some robustness. Now, it's, it doesn't say you can go out and trade this as is, but it certainly says, hey, there might be something to this. So just to show you real quick, uh, you can see this short trade right in the middle. And what you don't see beforehand is there was kind of a downtrend and then looks like a pullback and then it was starting to come back and that's when you went short. So the down bars were more than the, the up bars over the period I looked at and then there was that pullback and so that's why it took that trade. So here's, here's an example. The white part of the curve is all what I tested and then I ran it live from 2018 up until I think last week uh, and you can see that so the light blue is actually just pure out of sample just real-time performance <clears throat> not you know with trading costs but I didn't do any kind of changing to parameters so you can kind of see yeah it had some flat period but it, you know it's been making new highs lately so it's it's uh, looking pretty decent. So, 
yeah, that kind of gives me some idea that, hey, there might be something to this. We'll discuss later, you know, it's, like I said, it's not a completed strategy, but it's saying, hey, this price action pattern could work pretty well. Um, and like I said, you still have to do some other testing. I tried it on a few other markets, uh, the 30-year bonds, and actually the mini S&P, it looked pretty good too. And there were four other markets that I did some initial testing, and it, it looked pretty decent on those too. So um, all things considered, it, it looks like it works on a number of different markets. Which again, for me, isn't necessarily a criteria, but it's always nice when you see a pattern working in multiple places. It gives you some confidence that it might be good. Okay, um, so let's take a look at price pattern number two. And again, I have the trade station code up at the top and then kind of a plain English description down below. So what we're doing here is we're counting uh, closes. We're looking at higher closes, lower closes. So it's basically saying if the close is greater than the previous close, then you have this up counter. So increment that. And if it's not greater, then reset the up counter to zero and vice versa for the down counter. Okay. So one counter is always going to be at zero. The other one's also always going to be increasing until it switches. So what you want to do here is you count the number of up bar up closes and down closes. So this is different than up bars and down bars, but it's similar. Uh, if it's above a certain threshold and the momentum's going in your direction, then you buy. So this is a little different where now instead of looking within a bar, we're looking between two bars and we're also going in the direction of momentum. Usually it's better to go in the direction of momentum. That first strategy or the first pattern actually went against it, but this one goes with it. So again, it's pretty simple. It's pretty easy to understand. This one, I just tried it. I said, hey, I'm going to try four hour crude oil bars. And I tested it again over five years. Uh, you know, same sort of thing. I didn't do as many iterations here. And, you know, the interesting thing most of the iterations showed profit, which is great. I mean, that's what you want. It shows robustness. Um, but you can kind of see it's not always a real good thing. So here's a nice short trend. And wouldn't you know, this is a trend following, right? And it says, hey, go short again. And sure enough, you got short right when the market turned and the, you know, the trend ended, but you, you were still in it. So I wanted to show that specifically because any kind of pattern you use, any kind of indicator, whatever you test, there's going to be times where it just totally messes up. You know, um, if you look at this, I pretty much went short almost the worst possible time. Um, I guess I could have gone short one of the two bars after this, and that would have been worse. But this is pretty bad. This is right at the bottom. You know, most people would look at this and say, that's the time to buy. Of course, you know, we had just gone through a big downtrend, so that's what this price action pattern does. So anyways, most of the iterations are profitable. So, and what I mean by iteration, so I tried different look back periods with this rule, different exit bars, number of bars when you exit, and almost everything I did, it made money. And so that and that's over a five-year period. So that gives me some confidence that, hey, this might be worth looking at. And then here again, it's here's the, the live uh, performance. Uh, you can see the back test in white. And then when it went live, here's what it did. And I should point out, th these aren't the, the best cases that I'm showing you. So it's not like I optimized 
and then found the best case and then that's what I'm showing you. I'm just I just picked one that was in the the group of the performers, you know, towards the upper level, but not necessarily or never the best one. Um, you know, it might have been the second one, might have been the fifth one. Uh, you want to see that cases that aren't your best case are also doing good. So that's kind of important here. So that's pattern number two. It shows good promise again. And again, you have to do some other testing. I don't have time to talk about it here, but I want to at least expose you to a pattern that works and it works on some different markets. So I tried crude oil, but I also tried it on wheat and cocoa. And there were five other markets I don't even list here that it also worked good with. So it works in a number of situations, which is nice. So I apologize if I'm kind of going quick through them, but I want to get through all five of these patterns so at least you're exposed to them. And again, if I if I go too fast, just you know, take a screenshot and then at least you'll have it. And you can always listen to the recording afterwards. Okay, so let's take a look at pattern number three. Now, pattern number three is a little different because it's using uh, support and resistance. So I'm just using some, some calculations, standard calculations for support and resistance. So this doesn't involve looking at a chart and and trying to eyeball where support is and resistance these are just standard equations as far as are they good they're probably as good as most other methods of support and resistance the big thing is you have to test it right so you could say oh this is a complete joke yeah it might be but you'll see it, it gave pretty good results so if you have better ones you know, go and use them, but you get the idea here. Um, what I'm doing is looking for a, a price break above or a close above resistance to buy, and you can define the levels or a sell short when it's closing below support. And obviously, you could say, Well, hey, I want to do the opposite. That's great, that's exactly the kind of thing I like to teach people is take what I've done and do the exact opposite. How does it work? It might work good on some markets. That's what you have to do if you're building algo strategies. It's a constant process of just building and and testing and, and changing things. So you can take what I've done and kind of run with it and kind of make it your own. That's that's obviously a, a great way to do it. It's it's what's worked for me. So keep that in mind. So, anyways, that's kind of what this does. I just tried it on the mini Dow. Um, again, I, you know, I mentioned sometimes uh, the stock indices look pretty good as far as uh, you don't want to do them symmetrical. Uh, actually, what I this is actually a symmetric type long short situation. So, and it works with the mini Dow. And again, you'd see a lot of things similar. The one interesting thing here is I'm only doing 12 iterations. Now, it might be a little shocking to some people because you're used to thousands or millions of iterations. I mean, I've seen people who literally, uh, they post a question to a trading forum and say, what kind of computer do you recommend? Because my computer's running all weekend to test my strategy. And I'm just like, oh, man, I just know that person's curve fitting. So to do something with 12 iterations is like, Oh my gosh, people are, some people are probably freaking out right now. How can you do that? So here's how it looks. Now, this one, I'm not going to say is, is really good. It's, it's still doing good, but right now it's in a drawdown. It's kind of an interesting system because it, what it's characterized by are flat periods and then it has jumps up. So, Knowing that, you might want to incorporate that into something that you're doing. So it might not be a standalone pattern, but you might be able to use that. So you can kind of see it's flat up, flat up, flat up, you know, and I can keep flat up and then flat. And this there, it's down, but now flat 
and that looks like it's going up again. So it's this might tie into something else that you're doing. And um, you know, talking about those iterations, eleven of the twelve show profit. So almost no matter what I did here, I was able to make money with it, which is kind of neat, right? I mean, you know, you try it with like moving averages and you're not going to test 12 moving averages and probably get 11 of them to all give profit, you know, unless you're taking real small increments. So this is kind of robust. And, uh, you know, the nice thing, it cut most of, <clears throat> excuse me, it cut most of that recent crash. I don't know how it did the last couple of days, but um, it at least caught that. So that's kind of good to know. And again, it's not a fully developed strategy. So I'm not telling you to go out and trade this. You know, I'm actually telling you don't go out and trade this, but kind of use it as the start of your own analysis. Because uh, there's a lot of other testing that's got to be done, which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. Uh, seemed to work pretty well on Canadian dollar, unleaded gas. And there were probably eight other markets that I tested, or there were eight other markets where it looked pretty decent. So, uh, again, it's working over some different markets, which is good. It's not necessarily a requirement, but it kind of builds confidence for you a little bit. Okay, so that's number three. Moving along, number four, I decided to do just a, a standard candlestick uh, pattern. This is a bullish or bearish harami. And um, this is trade station code, so it's already programmed where it gives you, hey, this is, uh, you know, it's built in as a function. Um, and then if it equals one, then you know you have a bullish harami or a bearish harami, you know, for those variables. So it's pretty easy. So basically I say, hey, if I have a bullish harami, buy. If I have a bearish harami, sell short. Pretty simple. Uh, and obviously there's some detail of how you can uh, define these things. Uh, there's one variable with it, which is uh, the number of bars you look back over. But um, really simple. Now, does it work? Well, we're going to see in a second. But again, it, it's pretty easy to understand. And hopefully you notice with what I'm doing, that's a theme, right? Everything's been pretty simple. I mean, I could take five seconds and describe it to you. Why? Why is that important? Well, what I've found is the more complicated a system is usually not always, but usually the worse it produces in real time. So the performance is a lot worse in real time. It's not 100%. You know, there's complicated systems out there that probably do pretty well. But usually simple things work pretty well. The problem with simple things is now your back test doesn't work as good. Okay. And when you make it simple, the drawdowns are more. And that's kind of, you know, that's obviously related to your back test not looking good, but the real world has drawdowns. So, you know, whenever you see an equity curve for a back test and it looks perfect, if it looks too good to be true, just assume it is because it's very hard to create a perfect looking equity curve. And usually people that do that, there's a trick to it. Or, you know, they're cheating or doing something. So anyways, I'll get off my soapbox now. Um, 360 minute euro bar. So I'm, one of the things I'm trying to do here is just try to do a wide variety of markets. Again, five years, same kind of exit. I'm doing 40 iterations here. Uh, and then here you go. <clears throat> now, this one you could say, well, hey, the slope of the early part of the curve isn't like the slope of the latter part of the curve. That's true. But over a two-year out of sample period, it has been making money. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. So the pattern hasn't fallen apart. And you, you will get times where you test patterns and 
as soon as you look at out of sample data, they fall apart. That does happen. So um, you got to watch out for that. But there's a sometimes where the pattern keeps going, and this seems to be the case here. So in this case, all the iterations I tried, all the different uh, look back periods for this uh, Harami bars, along with the exit bars, number of exit bars, all of them showed profit. Now, it doesn't mean they were necessarily a ton of profit, but I like to see that <clears throat> before costs, before slippage and commission, that they're making money. Because if they can't make money over a wide range of parameters, they're probably not going to hold up in real time. You know, think about it. If you had a, a 40 iterations and one was just great, and all of the other 39 were losers. Would you want to trade a strategy like that where, you know, if you're just a, if the market changes a little bit, now all of a sudden what was profitable probably is not going to be profitable. You know, your parameter value might have to change and you don't know that until it actually happens. So you got to kind of watch out for that. So um, I won't, try to describe the the bullish and bearish harami but there is a bear, bullish and bearish bear, excuse me there's actually two bullish harami patterns here um, there's no bearish there's just a regular exit there but that kind of gives you an idea of the trades with it and uh, I tried it on a few different markets it worked good on ES it worked good on soybeans and there were actually six other markets that it worked pretty well on so again, it's something, this is a process of discovery for when you're building algo systems. You, you, I've given you some patterns that work. Now it's up to you to kind of take them and go and test them on different time frames, on different markets and see where it works and doesn't and see how it combines with exits. You know, just because it works with one exit doesn't mean it'll work with all exits. And so you got to kind of look out for that kind of stuff. Okay, so moving on to price action pattern number five. So this is uh, an outside bar followed by an inside bar. So I'm going to skip ahead real quick just so you see it. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't put it in there. But you can actually see that what you've got is you've got an outside bar and then an inside bar, and then you go short. and so the, the basic pattern is an outside bar, inside bar, and then what you'll do is you'll go long or short depending on the current momentum. So you can see there in this particular group of five, there's actually three strategies that I use momentum in. Uh, I'm a big fan of momentum because it seems to work. That's, you know, it's not because I somehow like it. Um, I like what works. And sometimes the momentum works really well, and sometimes the reverse of it works really well. So in this case, momentum's working. So the, the outside and inside bar, what they're kind of doing, if you want to think about it in, in terms of the market, is, hey, there's a lot of indecision, and that causes the outside bar because people try to take it up. Other people try to take the price down and, and neither succeed. And then the next bar is an inside bar because people are kind of really indecisive. And that's usually a good trigger to say, well, hey, you know, the momentum going in the direction of momentum might be a good idea now. So uh, I tried this with heating oil. So it's kind of a different market for you. Five years again. Same kind of exit where I just exit after a certain number of bars, whether I have a profit or a loss. So all these systems I tested were with these exits, no stop loss, no profit target. Um, again, 40 iterations. Here's what it looks like live. This one doesn't take so many trades. And so, uh, you know, that makes it a little scarier because you're like, Ugh, you know, uh, it's only 20 trade, 20 some trades and six or seven years, it's not real good. 
So uh, when I have cases like this, what I do is I watch them in real time for a longer period of time to make sure they're still good. But uh, that gets a little dicey when you start not getting enough trades. And of course, that's the big downfall with this whole pattern. I mean, look at through all this time, you made one short trade and that happened to be a loser. Um, but when you look across the whole spectrum of the iterations that you're taking, 36 of the 40 are shown profit. And so again, that's kind of telling you, hey, this is, uh, this is robust. And again, uh, there's some other markets it looks good on. Again, uh, wheat and cocoa, I think I mentioned that on some other ones. In 10 other markets, I actually tried that. It worked pretty good. So I just picked I just picked heating oil in this case. But uh, a lot, like I said, a lot of times you, you will see things that work on other markets. Does that mean you're going to be able to make a strategy out of it? Eh, probably not. Most ideas, most things you test will not pass all the tests that you want to do. So you might say, well, hey, you've talked about that. What are some of those tests? Uh, excuse me for taking a drink. So all I did here was just kind of like an initial test to say, hey, this pattern kind of has some uh, appeal to it. It might be good. So there's a lot more testing that I do. I do more in-depth testing of the of the entry to see if it has an edge. I, a lot of times I do exit testing. I do enhanced exits. I do walk forward testing, Monte Carlo testing, live evaluation. Then once you actually have a strategy, you got to do correlation testing to see how it fits with the rest of your portfolio. So there's a lot more to it than just knowing, hey, this pattern works. I'm going to go trade it. There's actually quite a bit of work you have to do uh, to it. And if you don't do all these things, you're liable to, to kind of screw things up. Because uh, like I said, entries are important, but it's really, for me, it's the process you use to develop a strategy. That's what's really important. You know, entries are a dime a dozen. You know, I, I could come up with entries all day long and probably some good entries, but it doesn't mean it's going to be a good strategy. You've really got to test things properly. And like I said, remember mistake number one way back when? Most people just go back and optimize the heck out of anything they're doing and then pick the best one and just go forward and trade it. And that's just totally the wrong thing to do. So if you've taken nothing else out of today, out of my talk, just remember that. Don't over-optimize. So how'd you like this video? Which of these patterns are you going to use first? Leave a comment. Let me know. And if you like what you see, visit my website, kjtradingsystems.com. Don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.